Are you looking to practice your skills for multi-step synthesis? Are you preparing for an exam that requires you to synthesize molecules with a given starting material? Are you a student taking organic chemistry for the first time? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mastering Organic Synthesis. In our last video, I asked if you could solve the multi-step synthesis for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another synthesis problem to solve for the next video. I really like this question because it seems relatively relatively straightforward. In fact, if there were a way to add an alcohol to this position and then oxidize, we would be done. Unfortunately, I can't think of any of the synthetic transformations that we learn about in organic chemistry that will allow us to achieve that sort of transformation. So in fact, we have to take a circuitous pathway in order to get there. And in fact, the different syntheses that I came up with are actually multi-step, in fact, eight or nine steps in order to get from this starting material to this product. And the first step that I came up with is to actually brominate this tertiary carbon position. And for that, we can use radical reactions, meaning we take bromine, Br2, in the presence of light or H nu, and that is going to allow us to brominate at that position. And it's going to brominate at this position because that is the most stable radical that would be formed at that tertiary carbon. And then from here, I can do an elimination reaction in order to generate an internal alkene. So I can generate an internal alkene by simply eliminating this reaction by using a strong base like sodium terputoxide or potassium terputoxide if you prefer. So potassium terputoxide would be sufficient in order to give us this internal alkene or what's also known as a Zaitsev alkene. Alkene. And then from here, I'm going to try to add a bromine at this carbon position. And in order to do that, it's going to be anti Markovnikov. So I need to use radical conditions. And therefore, I need to use something like HBr, where, which is my bromine source. And then I'm also going to add hydrogen peroxide to give me those radical conditions that allow me to generate the anti Markovnikov product here, where I would add the bromine at this position. Because without it, I'd just be adding the bromine to that tertiary carbon and going backwards. And this is gonna allow me a pathway to move over the location of that alkene. So I had to first brominate, eliminate to make the alkene, rebrominate at a different position, and now I can make an alkene at this position, again, by adding a strong base, like again, potassium terputoxide. And that is going to allow me to generate that terminal alkene where now the alkene is placed at this position. And from here, I actually found two different pathways that would eventually lead us to the same product, and they're both about the same amount of steps and both reasonable. So if you went with either of these routes, I think it would be perfectly fine on an exam or something like that. So one of those ways is going to be to brominate, to add a bromine at each of these carbon positions. And for that, we would just use bromine gas. And this would follow the uh, holonium pathway where we are forming a bromine at both of these positions. And from here, what this is going to allow me to do is to do a double elimination where I can generate a terminal alkyne. So if you add a significant amount of excess of NaNH3 2, for example, this is going to allow us to do a double elimination where you're generating that terminal alkyne. So a terminal alkyne, meaning that the carbon carbon triple bond is located at the end of this carbon chain. And then at this stage, what I can do is an anti-Markovnikov hydrobromination followed by oxidation to generate the final product. So in order to generate the hydroboration at the end of this alkyne, I need to do the anti-Markovnikov method, which again is going to require some radical-like conditions. So I'm going to be using a boron reagent in order to do the hydroboration, and then I'm also going to have conditions that allow me to present it at the anti-Markovnikov position. So typically this would be H2O2 and then sodium hydroxide. And then typically this is gonna be in some sort of ether like THF. And this would allow us to generate this terminal aldehyde. But as I mentioned, there's actually another pathway that you could follow to generate the same product in about the same amount of steps. So you could do a hydroboration of this terminal alkene, so a hydroboration similar to the ones that we've used previously, and then just do a swern oxidation or add something like PCC to take the hydroboration through an alcohol and then oxidize the alcohol to an aldehyde, which would also generate this product. And this is important to remember because oftentimes there's more than one way to achieve the synthesis that you're trying to accomplish. And ultimately what you're going to be looking for are the steps that seem the most likely, the most functional group compatible, and are often going to contain the most atom economy. So what we're looking for is the least amount of steps that use the least amount of toxic reagents that achieve our synthesis without wasting too many additional atoms in your synthesis. And those 
those are what we generally consider to be the best syntheses. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up down below as it really helps the channel. And then for the next video in this series, I'd love to see if you could figure out the multi-step synthetic pathway to this overall transformation. Drop your ideas as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another video. I'll see you next time.